Okay, I'm going to enter a 7% growth rate. I'm going to get the free cash flow numbers here. Uh, let's see what they are. I'm going to bring this down. Okay, I'm going to go with 14 billion. One, four, one, two, three. Okay, and then the number of shares outstanding. Let's see. We've got. Uh, 274, 274, okay, estimated intrinsic value, and let's see what we get, we get $76.06 there. Okay, just a quick review of how we arrived at that estimated intrinsic value. We took the number of uh, free cash flow, uh, and remember that this reflects the end of the year number after the 7% growth. So the uh, at the end of the year, that uh, 14 billion turned into 14 billion uh, 980 million, and then uh, you grow it out for the 10 years. There's the end of year two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then uh, no growth from years uh, 11 through 15. So they have the same figure as year 10, the end of year 10. That's why you see the 27 billion there. Then that is the grand sum. However, uh, that is a future value uh, which needs to be adjusted back to present value. So using the net present value formula here, uh, which takes the uh, group of cash flows and uh, calculates the net present value, we end up with this figure, 208-394-690-757.2. Uh, Divide by the number of shares, which is 2,740,000,000 shares, and that is how we arrive at an estimate of $76.06 using the two-stage discounted cash flow model. Um, remember, stage uh, first stage is calculated from the end of year one to the end of year ten and then the figure from year 10 because there's zero growth that figure is used for the remaining uh, years 11 through 15 and that's how uh, we get the grand figure here and then using net present value to get the present value of that amount divided by the number of shares ending with the estimated intrinsic value per share